Hello, hello. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy e-learning channel here on the world of YouTube. Delighted to have you on board. Thank you for stopping by. What is this? What do we do? Well, here I take you through the world of wine. Certainly if you are a student of wine and you want to really gain confidence in terms of passing for wine qualifications. So I aim these courses at certain qualifications. Here you'll see Wines of the World, which is called the D3 section for the WSET diploma. It's the level four. And uh, if you do have any comments, questions or concerns during watching this video or after, please do get in touch. You can do so via the comment section below my talking head. Please make sure that you click the like button because every little helps and then click subscribe so you are aware of our weekly updates, two per week to be exact. So let's rock and roll. Here we are looking at a series on Burgundy. This is series three of five, looking at the grape growing and winemaking aspects of the part between Dijon and Macon. That's the Cote d'Or, Chalonnais and the Maconnais. And this, remember, is this multi-part gripping drama of nine sections. This is going to be part three on the geology of the area. And this is the last free video. Any videos that follow this, that's four through to nine, are only available on my e-learning portal, The Wonderful World of Wine with Jimmy, where you've got access to a lot of exclusive content, things like flashcards, etc. And of course, it's ad free. It's just a great way to really help you with your studies. Um, also, you can utilize all of the um, handles at the bottom of each slide if you wish to get in touch in terms of the world of social media. So let's talk dirt. I wanted to say let's talk schist, but we don't have any schist down here in this area. Not much anyway. So let's talk dirt. Let's talk geology in time in terms of uh, Burgundy. So first of all, the Cote d'Or and the Cote Chalonnais form a part of the Saon Graben. That's what it says up here. So first of all, let's talk about what those two words mean. Saon is the name of the river. And that river, it's actually found its way through this graben. It hasn't caused the graben. What is a graben? Well, a graben is this middle part. It's basically a depression uh, in the landscape where the land has sunk. And it's often between two places, two hills, two mountains. You'll see here, we've got a part of the Alps, the Jura Mountains. And then we have the Morven uplands, which were discussed in the last two videos. In the middle of this area, it's the Saon River. And that's the area we call the Bresse Plain, where it's famous for chicken, poulet de Bresse, for example. And it has the Saon River has found its way through this depression because it is a, a sinking of the landscape. And that's how it happens here in terms of the movement of plates. So, yes, um, we are talking about the escarpments, which are pretty much like a, a follow on from the Vosges Mountains. It's quite similar to how the Vosges and the Alps interplay up in Alsace. And that's the Rhine Graben up there. But this is the River Saon down in this area. The soils here are generally limestone and limestone rich miles. I'm going to go through what all of that means in forthcoming slides. Uh, the Maconnais really is at the tail end of this um, geological graben or trench, and the soils start to change in that area. They're still limestone and marl, but there is some granite and there is a little schist, which we all like. So they make a bit of an appearance. That's certainly when you get down towards Beaujolais, for example. So if I just draw a line here, just to give you an idea of really what we're looking at, uh, it, it's this area. So where I'm drawing this red light, that, that is the area which has become exposed due to the sinking of the San Graben. And it's created these slopes which have eroded and you have different um, levels of uh, geology in there which have exposed things like limestone and marl, mainly sedimentary soils due to the history of the geological formations in this area where France millions of years ago was under a kind of warm, shallow, tropical lake, which had a lot of dead sea life over the years, which have formed the, um, uh, the sediment that we have down here, so the soils. 
Um, so let's go through it. Uh, in the Côte de Nuit, that northern part, so this is just immediately south of Dijon, but north of Bone. This is dominated by limestone and marl. Uh, the majority of the most highly regarded Pinot Noirs are grown here. So there's something quite special about the soils. Uh, and there's Nuit Saint-Georges in this picture. Uh, the picture is taken from Le Saint-Georges and you'll see with these roads, um, you'll see that there's like a chalky color to the roads. And that's your limestone, of course, the, the level of calcium carbonate in the soil. So what is limestone then? Because it's predominantly found here. It is a sedimentary rock, as I just discussed, composed primarily of calcite, which is a calcium carbonate mineral with a chemical composition of CaCO3, uh, famous calcium carbonate. It usually forms in clear, calm, warm, shallow marine waters, like that uh, shallow tropical lake I mentioned, which dominated this landscape millions of years ago. It's usually a biological sedimentary rock forming an accumulation of things like shell, coral, algal, fecal, and other organic debris. It's basically whatever lives in that shallow environment of, uh, of water and lake over the millions and millions of years dies and forms the sediment. The bones of that life form the sediment, this limestone rock. So that's what is limestone. What is marl? Because we mentioned that the northern area is famous for limestone and marls. Well, marl, or the other name for it, which is a more geological name, is marl stone, and sometimes mud stone, is a calcium carbonate rich sedimentary rock, but it has more varying amounts of clay and silt. An easy way to remember this is it's kind of a mixture of limestone and clay, whereas when we say limestone, we're talking about predominantly just limestone. So you've got a picture here of some limestone, but then you can see that there's definitely some clay based in the soils as well. And that's marl, and it's said to really produce the finest of Pinot Noirs in, in, and being very abundant in areas like Gevre Champetan, uh, Maurice Saint Denis, Chambon Moussini, and places like Von Romanet as well. Um, the Côte de Bone is the next area down. This is, in fact, the northern part of it where we find the Corton Hill. This is the Corton Hill in the picture. In the picture, And we have limestone and clay here. We tend to have slightly deeper soils. Uh, and the majority of the most highly regarded Chardonnays are found in the Côte de Bone, although there's almost a an even split between Chardonnay and Pinot in this area. So what is clay? So clay is a soft, loose, earthy material containing particles with a grain size less than four micrometers. That's that the little micrometer signal is the, the, the kind of back to front Y and M. So less than four micrometers. And it forms as a result of the weathering and erosion of rocks containing the mineral group of feldspar, uh, which is known as the madre of clay, the mother of clay. Uh, and that's over, of course, big geological epoch times. Um, it's absorbent of water, as we know. Uh, it holds water very well. If you are British-based, you'll know if you just take a walk in the, the countryside, in most parts of Britain, there's a lot of clay. Uh, and that's why we get those puddles that never go away. If you're a dog walker, you'll know what I'm talking about. So what about in the Chalonnais and the Maconnais? Well, down here, we're back to uh, the same sort of thing, actually. We get limestone and clay in this area. I will go into a little bit more detail about this when I talk about the Puy Fusse AOC um, at, down in that southern section because there is a bit of a, a uniqueness to the geology down there. So we'll go, th go through that. That is the big sort of um, limestone behemoth, which is the, um, the Rock of Solutre, which is a really imposing uh, site to see in terms of geology of the area and surveys its landscape of the southern Maconnais. So what about the depth of soil just to finish on here? So you'll notice that we are identifying here the shallower, poorer soils at the top 
of the slope. So the depth of soil above the bedrock will vary significantly. And that's due mainly down to the movement of soils down the slopes by erosion. Um, this, of course, is going to be a problem. It's actually the source of a continuing problem, even in the gently sloping vineyard areas like Clos de Vosho. There are thinner soils, of course, at higher elevations. At the top of the slope, there is too little soil for the, the vines to thrive. Um, and that's what we're showing you here. Surface runoff, erosion of soil, leaching of nutrients as well. And this really means that we have a high consumption zone in terms of the soil and we're going to need to work with that. So that's going to be maybe in some instances where they take soil up to the top. They refresh the soil. More likely that um, the aspects around viticulture of green cropping, um, uh, green manures, cover crops being utilized to um, create more nutrients. Down in the southern section, um, deep, richer soils, as you will see. Um, the bottom of the slope, you'll have poorer drainage. The soil is deeper, often with more clay, uh, and that results in greater fertility uh, for the vines. This in turn leads to more vine vigor and increased danger of shading because there is more growth of the vine. And that tends to all lead to a potential less of ripeness in these areas. So that brings me to the end of the geology section, part three soils. Check, thank you so much for stopping by. This is in fact the final video of the free section. So parts four onwards, all the way up to nine will only be available on the wonderful world at Wine with Jimmy's e-learning portal. Please go and visit www winewithjimmy.com. Uh, you won't find it a disappointment. There's plenty of exclusive videos, extra content, flashcards, you name it. It's quite useful. It's ad-free as well. And do get in touch if you have any comments, questions or concerns. You can comment on this video below. If you find yourself in the United Kingdom, come to London and see me at one of my establishments for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.